Hey everybody, General Scar here, and today I want to talk about my little game project, and specifically I want to talk about the dialogue system that I'm using in it. I did not build it out, I did not create this, I found it. I mean, I've been using this dialogue system specifically for a couple of years in whatever project I needed dialogue for, uh, and it's it's pretty simple, it's pretty powerful. They recently had an update that makes it like even better, in my opinion. It's a lot easier to use, I think, and implement into your games, uh, or at least a lot easier to get custom behaviors running in your games through the dialogue. I'll explain what that is. But I've been using what's called Yarn or Yarn Spinner. I think Yarn Spinner is the uh, Unity-specific plugin version of the Yarn language, uh, which is based on Twine, which is like another... Uh, it's not a dialogue system exactly, but it's like a... You can make like text-based stories um, out of it and stores like variables, and you can go to different nodes, and the player choices and stuff like that. Um, I use it every now and again to actually do like <laughs> visual blockouts because of the uh, way that it's set up is like node based and there's like you can draw nodes and there's like a grid that you can place them at and like arrows will point to them. So I've actually used it a couple times for just like room layouts <laughs> for visual aids. But um, anyway, yarn is really nice. It's pretty simple um, and it can become pretty powerful too. Uh, let me actually just open up the website. So if you just Google Yarn Spinner, it should be the first one. Yarnspinner.dev. Uh, it's got a whole website. They've got documentation. Um, you can download it. I think it's on the Asset Store as well. It basically downloads as a package. There's a GitHub, so you can actually like uh, contribute if you want. It's like open source. They have they have all this inf information about Yarn Spinner on the website, and it's it's really good, and you can download it. Okay, so it's not on the asset store, but you can add it to your uh, package manager inside of Unity, so it will update the packages and stuff like that if you want, which is also nice. There's other dialect system stuff out there that I've seen. Um, I should say, one of the main reasons that I like Yarn Spinner, like I could have made a dialogue system that is all just inside of Unity, and it's running inside of Unity, and I've done that before, and that's fine. But the great thing about Yarn Spinner is that I don't have to be in Unity to work on the dialogue. This is just a text file, basically. So I could just like load this up on my computer somewhere else, or just like on my iPad, or even like my phone, and I could just start like writing dialogue uh, that I can implement into my game later. Like the syntax is pretty simple and pretty consistent, so it's it's pretty easy to just do, and I can just like load it up write stuff like I'm writing like a script, like a play, like a movie or whatever, and not actually have to worry about integrating that inside of Unity. Because like Unity, then you're going to have to fill it in into like all these different text boxes, then you have to make sure the game objects and things are there, or whatever it is, if you're using scriptable objects, all that needs to be assigned. Where this, it's literally just, you write a text file, and then, you know, it more or less works. You just set up that, you know, set up the text file and the project, the yarn project, and then you're good. So it's it's really powerful for how simple it is to interact with. Um, and you could, like, if you're working in a team, you could have a person that doesn't really know anything about coding or Unity, and they don't need to. They can just, like, write stuff in the, the yarn scripts and then not have to really interact with the Unity stuff too much other than understand how, you know, the different commands and how they work and whatever. But you know, they don't have to go through all the interfaces and I don't, they don't have to download Unity if they don't want to. I don't know. It's just really simple. It's really nice. Um, I like it. I would recommend it. At least try it out. It's free. And they have like a, a base dialogue system that you can just drag and drop like a prefab and just have it work. And then you can customize it like I have where it looks a bit, in my opinion, a little bit better. But yeah. But that's what I've been using. Uh, I've I've added a few custom things. I've uh, edited the default line runner line view here um, with a custom version of it. I basically copy pasted the default one and then added a few extra features, like ability to hide the dialogue or like keeping the dialogue box actually centered in the screen, which was more of a pain to figure out than it should have been, but. Uh, so, like, the dialog box won't go off the screen, like, um, let me just show you that, actually, it's not too hard. And I'm really, really proud of it. So you can see, dialog box, if I 
move the, oh I can't move the camera because the bounds player camera here we go turn off like a viner turn off the snapping goodness gracious but if I move it down here where it'll clip off the screen it moves to the bottom of the character which I'm really happy with or um, if it just reaches the edge of the screen anyway it'll stay on the edge of the screen so you can just you know always see what what characters are saying and it'll move the box to the the, pl the person that's talking uh, using to a specific transform using the you know of the character which is also uh, a, a behavior that I added uh, most of this is uh, not is most of it's the same uh, the one thing I did change was this user requested advancements I added this return statement down here basically what that does is while the dialogue is running if you hit the continue dialogue button or whatever input you're using um, it'll just fill out the entire dialogue box and then uh, it'll stop like for, by default if you hit the button while the dialogue's still going it'll just skip to the next dialogue so you won't see it all it won't like autocomplete or whatever but this one little line here just adds that added up, ended up adding that behavior so that was if you want to do that you know I literally just copy pasted the line view in the packages or whatever and then modified it but yarn is really simple this is not this one this is the actual like scripts that I'm using these are the the things that the people are saying the or I don't know what scripts I mean like actual like acting scripts kind of <laughs> I guess you would say uh, each of these sections here where it starts with a title it ends with the three equal points is a node uh, there's a mo there's a plugin for Visual Studio code that actually shows whoa boy these are all the different nodes because <laughs> I, I wasn't using this but you can like add nodes and then when you you can jump to different nodes and like player choices I don't think I'm gonna have player choices in my game because adding the, out the and eventually I might if I can figure out the controls for um, doing the UI buttons with the keyboard inputs but you know doing it well but for now I just don't I don't but if you have them there will be like arrows connecting the node showing like which ones lead into what and stuff like that but uh, I don't each inside of these dialogues these things inside the alligator braces the double alligator braces whatever you want to call them the chevrons these are events and these uh, will run inside of your unity game if it can find events or whatever basically matching these um, and then in front of each of these lines there's a, a name and a colon whoa hello uh, that basically indicates that there's a character saying this line and then it'll um, the dialect system can like parse that and so you can have the line and then the person saying the line there's like a um, something up here that I did that with yeah, so there's dialogue line dot character name or text without character name, and I think there's one that's just the whole thing that's in there doesn't like parse it at all. So you can like implement that into your dialogue system however you want if you want to write a custom one or you know a more customized one like I did. I didn't change much honestly, <laughs> um, but yeah, these will run, and they can actually take in parameters as well. So for example. The name of the command and then the second one is going to be the name of the game object to run the command on unless the command is a static command in which case you don't need that but this is basically saying you know i want to move gabe the gabe character and this is like case sensitive so this will find the game object in your scene with the name gabe and then it'll run it'll try and run the move command on any of the scripts um, in there that are marked with the yarn command property so if I go to my character controller again I have a bunch of these like jump impulse that has this yarn command or I have a bunch down here if I go to the move one wherever that is move then you know it'll, it'll find the Gabe character it'll find a yarn command with the move command and then if you have parameters here like for example I have a string of what coordinate it is um, then 
it will do that. Like, uh, you can have floats and bools and stuff, but like I have a string input here, but it's not actually a string, it's a game object. So basically what it'll do, it'll find a game object with the name inputted here and then pass it as a game object into my code, um, which is really cool. So I'm basically moving the Gabe game object and I'm inputting the game object 3 comma 4 colon 6, which is a marker in my uh, scene somewhere. So it's like one of these little markers here. So 3 comma 4, 3 comma 4. Oh, these are old names. Yeah, so this one's saying to move here. 3 comma 4 colon 6. This is in the 3, 4 zone. And this is the sixth point in that zone is basically how my syntax is. I need to rewrite it so they actually match the <laughs> uh, act new zone names. But anyway, um, you can add other commands too. Like you can have multiple um, properties or whatever going in. So for example, here I have fall speed. So changing the fall speed of the player to this value. Um, teleporting the player to this game object. Or let's see, is there one that I have more? I mean, some of them you don't even need, like uh, set facing. This basically takes an object, one of these actors, these controllers, and choose, set, sets it to be facing left or right. Um, this one makes them jump. You know, and you can add these really simple just by having the actual, you know, method, the function on the script, and then adding the yarn command with a name. And then even cooler is that if it's set as an I enumerator, so if it's like a coroutine, um, then um, it'll wait until the coroutine is done to continue the dialogue. So for example, in this one for move, it'll run the coroutine and this coroutine waits until basically the actor is at the position. Um, and then once they're there, it ends. Uh, apply horizontal input basically stops the character here, but then like the coroutine ends so the I enumerator ends and then it'll continue on with the dialogue. So I can have the player say something, move somewhere, and then say something once they're there, which is really cool. But then also I have this one move no wait, where if I want the actor to move and the dialogue to continue or just end or something, um, I can do that too. And since this isn't an I enumerator, um, this is just a normal method, but it's starting a coroutine. Um, but it won't wait for the coroutine since the method itself isn't an I enumerator, if that makes sense. It's basically just, you know, this one will, in the dialogue, it'll wait until the player gets there. This one, it'll just go after the player starts moving. Now, to actually trigger this stuff inside of the game, uh, there is a dialogue runner. So I have my dialogue system, this is my custom version. Uh, as in, it's just, I took the prefab that was in the packages and I unpacked it and then I change stuff uh, to how I needed it to work. Uh, this line view here was also another prefab that I unpacked and then applied my custom line view script to and applied it here so that I wouldn't like get overridden by anything when I'm updating the package and stuff like that. But um, this one is a dialogue system. There's a dialogue runner somewhere. Oh, this is the dialogue runner. Yeah. Basically, the, the, it's made up of yarn, there's a yarn project, which contains yarn scripts that you can reference inside of your project. And each project uh, is referenced inside of your dialogue system runner, your dialogue runner. So you could have like different dialogue systems with different projects that contain different, basically groups of scripts. So for this one, I could just have this be my Haven scripts, like the tutorial stuff, and then I can create another yarn script, uh, just another file that has the stuff for the next area or the next sort of quest thing, and then add it to my source scripts here. And then when I run a dialogue, so for example, inside of, let's go to this first zone here. Uh, when I enter into this zone for the first time, I just take the dialogue runner, dot start dialogue, and then the string name of the dialogue, which is the title here. So this one is just titled Haven, and then the rest are Haven something because, uh, you know, to keep it organized <laughs> in some way to know that this is this dialogue goes in this area basically. 
but then yeah, just basically the dialogue mostly triggers when you enter an area or just when the player actually goes into a trigger. I have a script that lets the player interact with objects by pressing E when they're next to them. Um, so then that's another way that you can in start these dialogues or just like through whatever other custom code that you want to put in. Um, but yeah, just a combination of all of this stuff leads to, you know, fun stuff. Like this one here, this Haven intros, this is where the player, uh, or the Gabe introduces the player to all the other angles. And, you know, he moves to each individual one, and then they talk, and then he moves to another one, and then they say hi. So there's there's a lot of commands basically directing the actors in this one where it's like move Gabe here and then Gabe talks and then Mike talks and then move Gabe to the next spot where Gabe talks and then Cutie talks and then Gabe move Gabe and then blah 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 and then you know make him jump like oh that's right I forgot something blah 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 <laughs> stuff like that and then um moving Gabe to different zones and then uh teleporting him to another area to like just have him be in the right spot when the player moves into the next area kind of stuff. Uh, overall, it's pretty pretty simple, and it's been really easy to work with and integrate into the thing, and has actually sort of led to, I guess, a more open development of how I'm making these, or how I'm developing my character controller, at least, because I've added a bunch of methods that do stuff that, you know, are pretty useful and I can I can control elsewhere outside of the dialogue as well so like this move to point I can just like have a a script that does that if I need to or setting them left and right they're facing stuff um, and then like teleporting them somewhere that's always useful setting their fall speed making them jump have like a jump impulse so they just jump up you know and down really quickly if I need to just really simple stuff that You know, having it open makes some stuff a lot easier, and just having it there. It's added a lot of length to this script. <laughs> like, a lot of this is just um, out-facing, I guess, interaction stuff, not exactly behavior. So, but, you know, it's it's fine. So, yeah, that's the, I guess that's more or less the dialogue system and how I'm using it. I have made a video about my more or less the workflow I've also done while working on this project and I'll have another video where I just do a playthrough of the base demo area that I have set up currently. Um, but if you want to watch those, yeah. But I think that's mostly it for this. If you have any questions about this stuff, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll see if I can answer it. So thanks for watching. Hope you check out the other videos that I mentioned. And uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> I don't know. I just, how do you end videos?